Welcome back to the Intellect Stream Masters of Singapore, where we are deep into our amateur final for the League of Legends tournament here. And while CGA came out of the gate swinging in that first game, but Hong Kong Attitude, they brought it back last game. Incredible game by the entire team, really, and by Wind on Renekton. Stellar performance. That means we're on to a game three for the championship. To our commentators. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shox. We're back, and what better way to end off the amateur Game tournament three. here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. It's come all the way down to this. We've only seen one other best of three in the amateur tournament so far. So great way to end it out. And an incredible performance. Hong Kong Attitude just completely showed a, an entirely different team. They fit, the, Every lane that was weak for them in game one came back and was a huge source of strength for them. Game number two and oh, yeah. in last game of the day. What is Cyber Games Arena going to do to bring it back? Well, this is going to be going into picks and bans already. We're starting it up, and Cyber Games Arena, they their first game, when they first came here, they were down two games. I mean, down one game, excuse me, and they came back to two, but this time it's now reversed. Hong Kong Attitude could potentially come back two games from being down one, and uh, picks and bans coming underway. We're going to see Vayne taken away from God Quiet. They don't want to see him play that. Gragas away from 228. And then Caitlyn and Jarvan can get taken away from Hong Kong Attitude as they don't want to see Faye play Jarvan and they don't want to see End Gods. Caitlyn, as he's demonstrated, he can kite like a monster. But his Lucian is still open. Mm -hmm. Fizz is going to get taken away from 228. Nidalee is going to get taken away from Pasa. And uh, these bands, they're targeted and they're very aggressive. They do not want to see these champions. Yeah, and it's nice to see these teams kind of adapt to one another over the course of, uh, I guess, the, this three-game series yeah. as well as kind of scouting them out during the early part of the tournament. Uh, the Vayne, Gragas, Fizz, I think that's that's a really well-rounded ban phase for HKA. It targets out 228, takes away his strong champions, but it also prevents God Kwai from getting his Vayne, a champion that... While we haven't seen it, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> I would love to see him play Vayne. Apparently, it's something that just is to be uh, to be viewed in a high high regard. But Absolutely. Fiddlesticks made it through the bands. Shivana made it through the bands. Renekton made it through the bands. And he's out there too. Shivana is going to be a pickup for Wind here, so we're going to potentially see <laughs> a mirrored match up top. Red can get Renekton, and oh they can one v one again. And I wonder, can Red beat Wind, Shivana? Because Wind could beat. Red Shivana. Right. I don't know, but they're hovering over a champion that we normally see a lot in NA. The Lee Sin could potentially go jungle, could go mid, could go top. There's a lot of places he could be. We've seen him everywhere. But uh, uh, Elise is open too. Mm -hmm. And we saw that be a very big pick in the last game. Worked very well with the Chain CC combo that we saw combined with perhaps support Morgana. Yeah. But I can't imagine we're going to see that get given away. And Red, yeah, he's just going to lock that one in for a piece smite. Lucian also on the table, and less more, less of a pick for God Kawhi than it is a pick away pick from, from End God, yeah. who just had an incredible Lucian game. He's had pretty incredible Lucian games the entire tournament, besides the first game of today. Right. And he he rarely dies on that champion. He'll get like one to two deaths, but have about eight to six kills per game on that champion when he's doing good. And now we're gonna see what HK want to pick up. They're gonna look at Andy Spore for perhaps, or Andy Mid for Posse. You never know. He could whip that one out. There's no three targeted bands of Pasta here. Normally you see the Grag is the Fizz and the Nidalee away from him as they're all just scattered around on both sides. We're gonna uh, see Corky, Corky actually make an appearance here to try to go against uh, Lucian in the spot lane. Unless there's lane swaps, you never know. Right. It can be a little tricky with that one. And Annie in that lane, the burst potential is through the roof. Level six with Rocket Barrage, Foster's Bomb maxed out. That's about, uh, I think it's 600 damage combined with Tibbers coming in and the incinerate damage on top of that with the fireballs is just crazy. So that lane looking pretty strong already. But the side of CGA looking to go for potentially a Zyra Lucian lane. All right, so the Zylucian lane, if you want to look at it Lyra? that way. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to go with, with <laughs> Doa on this one. I think he was the one that talked about that being some sort of a medicated cream. I'm not sure exactly, but is that going to be what's going to fix that bottom lane for CGA? I like it, but we haven't really seen a Zyra very much and kind of has the Sona syndrome, yeah. where you start the game with about the same HP as a ward, and you tend to explode, especially against big burst lanes like Annie and Corky, a champion that we haven't seen a lot recently, but does have a lot of bursts to offer in that combo with Annie. Yeah, and Renekton and uh, Ziggs is going to get locked in here for the side of CGA. So Ziggs mid and then Renekton top for red. So we'll see if he has an answer to win on Shivana. But Cassidy, oh a pick we God. haven't seen the entire amateur tournament as I don't know uh -huh. if this is real. They're switching through everything. Darius could be a pickup here. We could see Faye or Fi bring that one into the jungle for Shivana. Vi gets swapped in. That's a little bit more legit. 
And they were talking and poking fun in the side of the chat, saying that, uh, you know, Pasta's Faker, 228's Faker, they're all just <laughs> making fun of each other. And if they whip the Blanc out, if they whip the little Blanc out, we could potentially see uh, some Faker-esque play. So for this game, it's 228's turn to try the Ziggs, and we'll see if he goes the same build that Pasta did and just opts for a lot of mana regen, a lot of <laughs> wave clear early on, because while Pasta was doing that, 228 was making plays. Yes. So if 228's going to try that on for size, Pasta is going to have to be the one roaming around the map. And we actually we talked it. about this before. There you go. It's Le the lock-in, the LeBlock-in, as it were. <laughs> Dan, we're going to see that in the mid lane as Pasa tries to make some Faker plays all over 2-2-8. Two, two, but last pick is actually one that probably won't define the matchup, but it is going to be the support pick there for, P, uh, not for Peace Might, but for, for God Kwai. It's going to be a Lucian Plus. <laughs> what is that support going to be? Sona, like we said before, having the health of a, you know, a melee minion, not not looking Fiddlestick's still too there. Good. Fiddlesticks is there. The three second fear on a little Blanc is <laughs> probably the most devastating thing you can do. She gets the passive and then she just comes out feared walking in random directions. Yeah. But they're gonna swap it out. It's not gonna be Sona, it's not gonna be Fiddlesticks, it's gonna be Zyra, so they're gonna Zyra. stick with it, which is gonna be interesting to see and I want to know if they're going to lane swap, and they're kind of messing with us on the side of HK. <laughs> Any mid LeBlanc support? I no, play LeBlanc support. LeBlanc support's a thing. Uh, chain? Something that chain the into the, the, uh, the W and then into the silence from the Sigil. Really good, but they're not going to do that. They're gonna, not going to try that one out, especially in Game 3 of the Grand Finals, and especially at Internet, <laughs> Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. I don't think they want to whip out the LeBlanc support, but Annie Corky, <laughs> very strong lane. I'm, I'm holding my breath. I have learned <laughs> if you come to SEA, if you're casting anything down here, you don't count anything out. I Timo. remember I not even Timo. I mean, <laughs> SGS been known to bring that out. And uh, I remember the first game I was like, OK, we're going to go to Singapore. Cast I am. What on earth is happening? <laughs> I tune into a GPL match. And there's like a jungle ribbon, something I've never seen before in North America, something that might see coming out again later on as the, the pro tournament about to start up as soon as this amateur tournament grand yep. final concludes. We're into the spectator delay, which is in fact zero. zero. <laughs> so we're going to get right into the game. It's the deciding game number three in this Intel Extreme Masters Singapore in, uh, Amateur Tournament Grand Finals. Hong Kong Attitude, they lost game number one, brought it back against CGA. Looking to close things out here in game number three. Yeah, and I already see uh, 228 rocking the, the major zigs, looking to uh, be the right. leader for his team in the mid lane. And it's uh, going to be very interesting. Zyra not going for Ignite, for going that one, and going for Exhaust. So mainly looking to stop kind of quirky slash Shivana. It can work on Vi a little bit and pretty well, but it's not going to do much against Annie LeBlanc because when LeBlanc comes in, if she has the DFG, you're going to get one shot. You're not going to have a good time. You're going to get bursted out or one shot potentially, but we're on the rift. We're ready to go. Annie's charging up a stun. They're grabbing wards and looking to either go on the offensive or go in the very defensive because we haven't seen too much uh, jungle invade into first bloods. All right, so do you want to welcome you guys to the game? If you're just now joining us, you picked a pretty good time to start watching. It's the Grand Finals, the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore as Hong Kong Attitude, your team in the blue, taking on Cyber Games Arena Legends, your team in the red. I am Rapid. I'm here with EGAD, and we're about to get this game underway. Level 1's to come out. Oh, it's going to happen. Are they going to go in, though? I want to know what LeBlanc leveled up. Did she level the chain up? It looks like nothing yet. So they're holding on to their abilities. The burnout for Shivana, though. So she will be able to get in and out very fast. We have the Annie. She drops one ward at the entrance of the red. There's a ping onto the ramp. They know. They know that they're going to try to come in here. Ping's coming out from the side of HKA. They're going to drop that Draven ward. It gets pinged out. They're going to look to rotate up top. They're going to get spotted out by red, though, as now this invade is going to possibly be deterred, or are they going to keep going through? It looks like they're going to aggressively go in and not be afraid as 228 gets spotted out. Annie looking for the uh, the instant flash stun with the incinerate and into a potential kill. But they get the red wards. They're going to play this aggressive. And I think that's going to be a red steal, but uh, Pest Might could do the same. Now, if he does go for that uh, red buff steal, he will be scouted out by those Draven wards. So I see those coming out today, and it will be a red steal here uh, for a Fi. Uh, I mean, they're backing right now, but it looks like they will stay here for a little bit longer. So Red Steel for Red Steel, it's all on Peace Mike. Does he want to go for this? Doesn't have a uh, big contingent of his team along with him, so probably just waiting to see what's going on he, there in the lower jungle. He actually is ro rocking up right now, but 228 and Sean are going to look to respond to this Red Seal. This ward 
there's not a ward there actually from perhaps early on. So they will spot them out. Red buff is going to be initiated here by Smite, who's going to try to solve it out. That's going to force a Smite. Faye is going to have to go to blue buff, and that is going to slow down his jungle exponentially. And now Smite actually going to be contested here by perhaps who's going to come in, going to get the stun, oh and going to do God. a ton of damage. Red buff going to get Smited. Ignite comes out. Pest Smite going to get taken out by perhaps an Annie with some of the longest oh attack range in the game with a red buff. That is going to be a nightmare for that 2v2 up top. And you can see Wind immediately, no questions asked, rotating to the bottom lane to go for that 1v1 matchup. Because when you have the advantage there's with that red buff on Annie, there's no reason to go into a 2v1. Because even if you hit that 2v2, you're going to have such a huge advantage. 625 auto attack range. Doesn't get much longer than that. The only exception being Caitlyn and then, of course, abilities. <laughs> Modifying yes. that as well. Mid lane as well. Pasa has a huge minion wave shoving in there to Ziggs, but 2 2 is going to be able to clear that out pretty easily as we finally, at long last, get our 2v2 matchup. The big difference being that it's already a level 2 duo lane oh, for Cyber Games Arena. That's really rough. And they're also down a ton of CS. 11 CS this early on is something you do not want to see. The red buff being applied to Sean right there. The anti auto attack is going to come into effect in this lane very soon, but. Seeds and the Q from Zyra are going to do a ton of damage and harass. We do see a piercing light to farm up and going to keep uh, Godquay safe, but perhaps fearless on this Annie right now. He's got first blood. He's got red. He's confident <laughs> in his lane. Look at him leading the charge. That is just the manliest Annie. Manny coming into effect. <laughs> I'm not going to think about that one for too long. Perhaps continuing to push out there. Yeah, just going completely man mode, pushing that out. Knows that with red buffed auto attacks, it's going to take a little bit longer to catch in onto her, as well as as long as she dodges those grasping roots from Cyrus should be safe for then. I'm kind of interested to see whether or not we just see a completely passive side lane experience like Probably. we have in a lot of games before. It looks like, uh, I don't know, Fai is going to disagree with you there coming in <laughs> behind Red, who does have Slice Ball and breaker. Dice there. There's the Burnout coming in. Ignite gets dropped. The Ball Breaker does not knock up, and that's going to be in that fight. He just Slices and Dices, and with Ignite being down for Wind, this could be a time for Breath to try to fight this one out, especially with Peace Might coming down. We do have a lot of damage being applied to God Kwai as well as Sean. So they're going to be backing out. The Red Buff still being applied. Pasta doing a ton Ooh. of damage. Not popping the Sickle, though. So we'll lose out on that trade just a little bit. But down bot, actually. The kill gets oh, transferred wind. over. Pest Might comes in. The Spiderling picks up the kill as that is going to be dead wind. And Pest Might going to back out. Both top laners dying. And respectively, it's going to be no kills with the top laners as they're in the bot lanes. The bot laners, respectively. But one kill each for the junglers. Yeah, kind of the doldrums down there in the bottom lane for HKA. They will lose their solo laner. But at the same time, you got to look at what they're accomplishing elsewhere on the map. You can see just lane domination from N God and perhaps. And N God, we've seen his Lucian alive, but Heaven found out what he can do on Corky with perhaps uh, trying to give him that early red buff, but taking one for himself. It will establish a lot of lane dominance here as they put some damage down on to CGAL, or CGAL's top turret. Yeah, and we do see Pest Mike coming up, probably looking to relieve some pressure of the start and maybe try to pick up a kill. Flash is still available for the side of HKA as well as available for CGA. We will see what they want to do with this one as uh, God Quad is still now actually falling behind us. Yes, that red buff uh, from perhaps early on just changing that lane quite a lot. You see everybody going back, the junglers and the mid laners, and red and wind just being that island after uh, the ganks and both junglers just picking up a kill. So no, no real snowball for this. Uh, "Quote unquote top lane in the bot lane." Uh, yeah, it's, it's just gonna be—it's fairly safe, fairly close. I uh, did see deaths for both side laners, really just making their junglers stronger. So I'll have to see where that strength goes. And it looks like it's up into the top lane. Or Peace Might, who's uh. waiting there in the brush. But now you can see Engaden perhaps they're actually playing this very, very passively. I really like that decision. It's it's not that they necessarily know that it's coming, but hey, when you have an advantage and when you're over pushed to the turret, it's always gonna be a little bit rough to stay there without getting ganked. Oh yeah, and the ward coverage coming in from the side of HKA, phenomenal. They know that no wards have been dropped by Sean as they've been pushed underneath the turret. He's out of wards as well. And this is uh, looking to be like a sign of a 3v3 oh. early on. The Rue connects out of perhaps. He tries to bait this one out. He flashes away. It's like a cocoon. Gets a two man stun on the Sean. Venomous oh Blade comes in. Sean is going to get blown up right there. One more auto attack. No Flash from N God gets the kill. He barriers the turret. Pest Mike's going to be their next target. He's going to repel away. Can anything else come out of this one? N God gets the kill. But Pest Mike coming back in with the Neurotox. And the cocoon almost connects. And the piercing light and the flash from God Kwai picks up the kill. They turn it into a two for one in favor of CGA. A beautiful play from that repel from Elise as well as God 
Kwai with no fear on that Lucian. Hong Kong attitude, where is your god now? And the answer is dead along with perhaps in that dual lane, just taking out an excellent Oh, the reaction. Mega Infernal Deathbot comes in, Arden plays, not gonna connect up top. Oh, that was, that was very close. Fine almost just barely getting away with his life. I was watching the mid lane, I was like, why is Tutu? Oh my god. And then it misses. So <laughs> it hit actually. Well, well, it hit, but the Ardent Blaze yeah. missed. So Fi stays alive and will back on off to the bottom lane. You'll notice he's recalling just outside the brush in case any random super mega death rockets or something just happen to fly. A right jinx on from in the there. other game over there, <laughs> and the other computer just comes in with a rocket. But yeah, just uh, very nice from CGA. That play was phenomenal up top. I, uh, all right, so back to the bottom lane, just nothing but wave clear mid lane. Waiting for Pasa to pounce. A 0, zero, zero LeBlanc. You know, hmm. you're not dying. You're able to stay in there and keep farming. Now very low on mana. Looking to get this Sigil of Silence. Ult in there. Freezes in mid lane. Will get... Huh? Doesn't get the... Uh, chain on, but it won't latch. It's okay. We do see a solo attempt from the dra on the Dragon here coming in from Red and uh, Pestmite. So they will give the snag this one away. Vi is nowhere near. Actually, he was near. He's up Red Buff. But CGA, they're having a really good time with these Dragons. They've controlled Dragon pretty much every game. Yeah, even in like game number two, the, the one that they, game, lost, they were controlling it. <laughs> they still got it more times than they lost it. This time around, I would expect it to be a little bit more difficult, but it's still very even between both of these teams. And even though they did take that dragon away, it's still pretty even, about a 600 gold difference between both teams. Yep, and uh, up top, going back, let's see how much gold they actually have. It looks like not too much, not too much of a difference, nothing stacking up too much. 600 for Engod, he's farming up as well, 400 for God Kwai. It looks like the Trinity Force rush for Engod, but God Kwai gonna stray away from that and go for, it looks like a Bloodthirster first. All right, so God Kwai, he's got his own way of playing Lucian. We I saw so. an incredible performance from the Trinity Force Lucian on Engod. It's a little bit of a debate, you know, which builds you want to go for, favorites in both camps, but Trinity Force has already got a win in its column, so we'll have to see if the Bloodthirster Lucian can come out and work out here for God Kwai, because this is the only game that matters. It's game three, three. of yeah. the grand finals, the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. If you're going to try to pull something interesting out like the uh, the LeBlanc in the mid lane, you're going to have to make it work, because if it works the next game, uh, not, not really as important. So <laughs> it's three to three, zero, zero in turrets. Everything about as even as it gets. Only that one dragon, the gold separating Hong Kong attitude from Cyber games arena yeah and we do see wind picking up a giant spell on his first back and giving up a lot of cs red at about 23 cs head right now going back and go farm and maybe pick up his own giant spells or chain vest you never know as a uh, fey looking to come up top he might vault breaker into that seed though so uh, gonna be very interesting to see if they spot it out but pest might standing on top of a ward and they might try to bait this one out again and try to start a 3v3 that uh oh my god they, they're clumping up they're ready and they're spotted though tabers is available no flash, though, for perhaps, and Barrier coming up in just a few seconds for End God as uh, the pings come in, and Faye will not get They're playing this out. so well, just the trying patience. to wait out there. Yeah, so patient, much wait, many uh, ganks in the brush <laughs> for them, and perhaps pushing this, slow pushing this, and this is some commitment, man. Oh, not geez. Consistency notwithstanding, CGA have They're giving been... up a lot for this, though. They're losing out on CS for <laughs> they're on God, top of for a ward. God Kwai. Yeah, they don't know that ward is there, though, so this is working out really well for HK. They're going to back out. They see perhaps coming in. Auto attack gets applied. Gonna just hit a spiderling with the rockets coming in, and now it's the waiting game for Faye. <laughs> All right, so nice to see a ward placed out there that is not spotted by the pink ward that will admittedly die. But wind controlling that dragon area, at least for now. It's going to be a two to three minutes before it comes back up. So see if CGA are able to control that once again. This might just waiting right outside the vision range there. And both junglers, they're just sitting top. It's like the jungler's job is not actually to kill creeps <laughs> in the jungle. It's just to sit in a lane and wait for a kill, at least the way that both of these teams are playing it. Kind of reminds me of Solo Q. You just, you know, jungle camp stop, ignores everywhere else. <laughs> but with the 2v2s respectively being there, it makes perfect sense. We do see uh, level 7 for both junglers. 2 to 8 farm of the jungle, trying to uh, catch up on CS and Pasa. That blue buff, helping him push the wave and shove it out, as well as control the lane and deny CS away from 2 to 8 We do have Assault and Battery available. There is uh, a ward for HKA, but I don't see anything for Sean on the side of CGA. So this dive could come yes, in. Might. He went back to base. He's uh -oh. coming back, but is he going to be uh -oh. here in time? 
Wave about to hit that turret, and Vi's signal to go. Oh, there's going to be the slow plant coming in. Vi's coming in from the back here. You're going to be the assault and battery, but the Relic's Brute comes through. There's a nice Strangle Thorn going in. Andy going a little too deep. Going to eat some turret shots. The Timbers goes in, and cool. God Kwai actually picks up one. Are they going to chase down a pace smite here? It looks like they are. Vi really low at this point. There is the bomb coming in the from Sigs. The Culling comes in as well. Pest smite with the elbow of the Spiderlings and the Culling from God Kwai. Pick up the kill. Get the jungler another one. Puts him at 3 and 1. Faye gets away, and that's another 2 for 0 in a 3v3 situation for up top. Yeah, perfect gank attempt there by Faye, but it, it was a relentless pursuit away that got, uh, they got God Kwai out of range of Faye's follow up. And then it's just like you mentioned, a little bit of overextension for perhaps, and then End God going down the dual lane that was such a source of strength in game number 2 for HKA. Now actually a little bit weak, both of them 1 and 2, whereas you see a 2 0 Lucian. We'll have a bloodthirst oh, when he goes back. Actually, Red is diving in onto Win, but Faye is there. A lot of damage could be applied. He slices oh, in range to get onto that melee minion. Faye chasing this one out, getting some auto attacks. He's going to shatter him with the excessive force, and he's going to turn around, do a ton of damage. And Faye can't really out damage this Renekton at this point. Yeah, Faye has boosted mobility, so he's going to have a lot of presence all over the map. But he's not going to be diving turrets, tanking things up. And that's another thing that actually went kind of bad. Now oh Faye could go down, force the flash away. Flash coming in, ignite and stun oh an auto my. attack. Red making oh, the colors show. Here's the sun <laughs> coming in from Annie. Red is going to fall out here. Oh, no, actually, man got in. That is a nice follow up. But still, sacrificing a kill to him is not something you want to see. Faye tried to get away, but just could not. He was trying to bait it for Endgun, and perhaps. And that's actually an overall win for Hong Kong Attitude, yes. because they pick up the assist gold as well on perhaps. So, uh, I mean, winning the 1v1 is cool and everything, but you have to make it out alive to avoid giving away more gold to your opponents. Now, four and six, the duo lane starting to get crushed a little bit, especially off of that uh, jungler control. And now with a bloodthirst to complete for God Kawhi, we'll have to see who is the reigning de deity in that <laughs> bottom lane as the game continues. 13 minutes in, dragging up in 20 seconds. We've seen Hong Kong attitude control that in games number one and two. Can they keep that objective control in the deciding game three in the grand finals. It's like a repeat of top lane. Here comes Pest Might right down the lane, looking to come into the 2 2, into the 2v2 lane. And uh, he's going <laughs> to walk around. He'll get spotted off by a pink core. Dragon is currently live. So we will see them just rush right on over to that and take control of it. Pink core gets dropped. They're going to spot out the Dragon Ward. Go clear that out as soon as possible. But it will force a response from most likely LeBlanc and Faye. And it's getting chunked out very hard. Boss is not even Are they coming. It up? They might just give it up. Yeah, it's down to half HP. Pestmite very low. There's actually going to be the Mega Inferno Death Bomb, but with Faye getting in there, just wants to check and see if the dragon's low enough. It's not uh, going to be the objective. They're chasing this one down. Perhaps has Tibbers, has a stun ready. Can he get anything out of this one? Oh, Pestmite going to be the target for this as he repels to the assault. The battery. calling. The calling in 2 to 8 with a ton of damage. Pestmite gets blown up by Pasta, though. Here comes Wind in the back. Dragon to set a Valkyrie away from Engod. Perhaps getting chunked out with Engod. They're forced to back out. Pasta coming in a flash and a bouncing bomb from 2 to 8, but it's not oh, enough. Silence Here out. comes Red as well as the root now connecting from Sean. Pasta's going to flash away. Red is going to chase down this one with a Dominus active. Can he get anything else with this one? He slices, gets Stun <laughs> underneath turret, the signal and the silence comes in. The chain is going to slow him out. A ton of damage being applied. He gets two chain. That is now red. 1v4ing, but not getting a kill. HKA and God turns it around. They just went two for none and baiting N God with perhaps. That was just really good kiting. Just perfect play there by wow. Pasa. <laughs> a lot of LeBlancs will just think to themselves, okay, what is my maximum damage combo here? Uh, but in that situation, it was actually Pasa's two chains in that bottom lane that did wind up <laughs> locking down red for just way too too long, and like you said, just perhaps being the bait that could not be resisted there by uh, Red Dove a little bit too deep. Now, CGA are going to have a, a pretty decent time at taking this dragon away, but at what cost? Looks like at the cost of nothing, the root connects on to wind. He'll back right on out, they'll get the timer at least, and that's gonna be the second dragon of the game going over to CGA despite that rough fight. All right, so CGA, they lose the battle, but they kind of win the war, yeah. taking overall more global gold for their Whoa. team. But now Sean getting blown up oh, there. Oh, the chain. You're going to pop it out. Auto attack comes in. Possibly going to get hit by the Mega Infernal Death Bomb. The passer from Zyra does not connect. He's trying to oh, choose this one out. It out. He gets it. He's going <laughs> to dash away with the W. The Repel is not going to be in range to get to him. They'll pass beat a uh, Smite. going to get oh, hit by the chain. Smite. And now they're going to turn it around, and Faye picks up the kill. <laughs> a really nice juke coming in from Possum right there, using that clone and just stopping himself. And that was really cool to watch.
Uh, yeah, at that point, you got to kind of turn around. And I, th I see Select over there. And if you if you throw out the K Pasa, the what's up, son, that's exactly what uh, <laughs> I imagine Pasa must have done in that situation. Because over and over again, at least in the last two situations, we've seen CGA barely about to get kills. The overextend for them can't close the deal. And it's just HKA laughing all the way to the bank with that one, uh, picking up a nice kill. Pasa survives, and now, like you mentioned, Death by a Grasp is complete. It's been completed. That's what helped pick, him, pick up the kill on Sean through the exhaust, which really did nothing. It it's just back delayed cool, the auto attack. Man. Yeah, like it's just up in 60 seconds. It's so strong. And we're going to see a rinse and repeat motion trying to take out the supports. Is he level 12 in that mid lane against a level 7 Zyra? So he's going to have a fun time with that DFG, but. Downbot, still the push is commencing. They're trying to push down this tier one turret. They're still behind in a turret on the side of HK. It's just a 1-0 turret lead, and that could be, uh, you know, even up at any time. We do oh, see Pasa. an attempt at a lot of damage on a 2-2-8, but does not get the extra signal of silence. The chain doesn't connect either, so just disengages, keeps it safe. And with Pestmite around the corner, he wants to play this a little bit more safe. You know, there's sometimes that missing your combo is a good thing. Pestmite was right there in the wings. If LeBlanc had committed, Pasa, I don't know, would have been dicey see if he was going to get taken out there by the counter gank from Peace Might. So now looking to make a play up top lane. Won't have Deathfire Grasp for this one, but will have that sigil back off of cooldown. Bottom lane, where the pressure is going to be exerted. Peace Might, man, he knows a couple of... He, he can do a couple of different things. He can gank <laughs> bottom, he can gank top, and he can kind of follow God Kawhi wherever he decides to go. That's, that's kind of what he's been doing. He's like, all right, God Kawhi, we believe 203, it's been effective, but how effective do you need to be? They took Engod out of the game, but he just claws his way back. There is the <laughs> Trinity Force. And uh, for him. if you look at Wind right now, he's kind of dirty farming between the tier one and the tier two up top because. <laughs> Red can't do anything to him, so he will just give it up. The, the Spirit Visage coming in from uh, Red is helping him sustain through most of that wave, so they're just going to be dirty farming with each other, just proxying the waves, and uh, Wind can give up this wave and go back to base and farm as he has a completed Sunfire Cape as well as a 800 gold left to spend, so maybe a Boots, but Vamp Scepter, so going for the Blade of the Room King and giving up those Boots. And now this is the Shivana build that Red did in the last game that actually lost him that game. But now, Faye, oh, he's gonna yeah, get okay, away. He's good. He's fine. <laughs> All right, okay, crisis <laughs> averted. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I don't know what to say because it seems like a lot of these team fights kind of materialize out of nothing. Sometimes it's a little bit of an overextension off of a dive. Sometimes it's just an I think I can kill you, but I really can't. And then capitalization by the follow up from the rest of the team. Bottom lane's End God and perhaps uh, off of the level one red buff for perhaps, I thought that was going to be a, ga a lane that you just kind of picked to win, but off of a great presence by Peace Might, done a lot for God Kawhi helping him turn that around. Oh, Mid lane, man. Mega. 2 2 8 getting dove right there. The chain connects. Faye's going to hit the last hit of the turret. That's going to be a one for one and a 2v1 dive. And almost. Almost getting out of there. Red is going to join back up top. Going to look to go on to Wind here. He's going to call the meek, slice the dice, get to the stun. Wind is going to eat one more short shot, but a dive down bot actually going out to God Kwai. The Timber's coming in, picking up the kill with perhaps as they're trading back up top. Still at Island <laughs> going back and forth. The tier one in the bio lane should go down with N God's uh, persistent damage coming in, but perhaps very low. Pest might look to come in and try to smite that Annie as he drops the Neurotox. The Spider Lane comes in. Wind is trading up top with Red. We do see the Repel forced out down bot. Pest might be forced back down. <laughs> N God there. doesn't care. He's like three chances. Champions, no problems, and uh, especially with LeBlanc about to come down, uh, decides to go back into that like, okay. top lane. It's Wind and Red playing the run at you game. It's like, I'm going to run at you now. No, I'm going to run. And it's, it's, uh, it's about it's as like ridiculous as that sounds. <laughs> kind of, but with death in mind. It's like <laughs> yeah. extreme tag. I don't know if that's really going to result in a, a verdict anytime soon. It's, they're both just auto attacking, running away, running back and forth. But either way, mid turret does go down, pushed out there by Pasa, who's going to take away a blue buff as well, allow him to stick out there in the map. But especially if you check out the gold count on uh, LeBlanc, she's got 1,600 gold in her inventory. That's another needlessly large rod. That's a lot of damage that she's not going to go back to base for. And look for a nice pick here. Uh, they get pinged out by the ward, though. Red is going to walk in. We see 228 kiting just a little bit. Hits the bounding bo bouncing bomb onto Pasa. We do see an Oracle's onto the jungle in face, so helping out of support a little bit there. And uh, oh, dive Sean. in the bot lane. There's a flash to Kuna. Perhaps the root comes in as well. Auto attacks. And the wow, the calling picking up the kill from God Kawhi <laughs> out of perhaps. So really good coordination and a really well-timed dive from CGA. Now they're going to try to snag their second tier one of the game and even up the turrets as we do see it go down. God Kawhi gets the last hit for that. 
will be looking to back out while HKA wins. Oh, 2 2 eight. Oh, he's gonna charge oh, this one. The blue up comes out. He doesn't connect the chain. The auto attack picks up the last kill. I mean, the last hit and kills him as he blows up in the air and gonna respawn in that base in the next few seconds. But double buff. Actually, no, just one buff. Tries to throw over to Pasa. Single buff, but also another kill there going Pasa's yes. way. And just 4 0. That's, that's less like individual mechanical skill and just knowing the map. He knew that the timer for blue buff. He's like, all right, Ziggs is gonna go over there. I'm gonna meet him there and uh, give him uh, a little bit of a bad time. Blue buff now on to Pasa. Everything going his way. 4-0-2. Had a little bit of a slow start. Yeah. But turned to 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero into 4-0-2. Oh, zero, and two. God Extremely actually was forced to flash quickly. away for something down bot. But we do see uh, God Quay and Sean exerting their pressure, keeping N God down, keeping him back in a 1v2 situation. But up top, N God. <laughs> I, I, and a red and wind just going back and forth, trading it for uh, those golems. This is League of Legends right here, Egad. This just is farming. the pinnacle of competitive. <laughs> All right, so all that notwithstanding, probably something better to focus on is going to be that dragon. Uh -oh. Because with that kill picked up earlier on, HK in a pretty good position to take it down. The culling comes out, perhaps going to eat a little bit of damage. The culling doesn't take mm. too much there. They clear out a war. They're trying to. Pasa actually picks up a kill, goes unstoppable, takes out Pesmai, but falls down to 2 2 8. Well, now this red buff is going to be a big point for our flight, perhaps. Has the stun ready. And uh, not going to find anything. And it looks like they're going to try to 3-man this dragon without a smite. So steal potential for both sides. But Faye, with the smite, has a much greater advantage at taking down this one. He's going to walk in, bouncing mob to zone, and a smart play from CGA to disengage from this one and wait for Pace Fight to be back Oh, up. perhaps is in a little bit of danger. Oh. Sean might have been able to catch him out there. All right, Don't no, actually, he's going to walk in. He's going to get Timbers on a 2 2 8. Perhaps he's getting chunked out, though. The Mega Infernal Death Bomb doesn't connect, but Godfly having no problem oh, taking God. him out. Faye with Vaultbreaker charged up, not looking for anything else from that. And that is going to be a nice, simple kill, taking down perhaps who could have gotten out. He could have gotten out of there, but he just stayed and waited for uh, some help from Engot, but they couldn't do it. Well, he tried to turn that around with the Timbers, and it was a nice sort of bait. He's like, all right, you guys think you're going to get me, and then I'm going to turn around. But N guy just a little bit out of range and really didn't want to jump straight into so much Up burst top, damage. Up though, the training with ultimates, Dominus and Dragon's Descent, both <laughs> pop, slicing and dicing his way through. Got to pop the Ghost from the side of window. So he's trying to run away. Ignite is available and Flash is available for Red, but he decides to just be content with Ghost being gone from Wind, as well as that Dragon's Descent. So he'll walk his way back home, maybe pick up a Wolf Camp on the way there. And this Dragon, still a big point for a fight. And that's actually a kind of a turning point because while CGA in every single game of the series has taken mostly uncontested dragons, now it's actually Hong Kong Attitude who, though they lost perhaps, were able to push CGA off of that objective. So could be a little bit of a realization from CGA. Hey, we don't necessarily want to go for that. They wound up trading away uh, the jungler from mid laner earlier on. Pasa able to keep getting kills, but that signal a little bit of weakness as he did die there in that last attempt. But hey, 5 1 and 2 death cap as well as a death fire grasp. But a lot of death going on in the <laughs> itemization there for Pasa. Yeah, and uh, someone who's not having too many deaths on his side is Pasa with Bella Blanc. 5 and 1 and 2 looking really strong. But Godquai still. Trinity Force Bloodthirster completed. Looking really strong. They're trying to 4 man this dragon, 5 man this dragon actually as Red leaves the island and joins the team. And they're going to look to get this one as fast as possible. Faye waiting on the side. Can he come up with the smite? It looks like no. As Pusmai, at uh, Pesmite, excuse me. Puman do coming across my mind right there. But the calling the being calling. used as the assault battery goes in onto Faye. Onto oh, a Sean. Godquai, but Sean is going to be initiated on by Faye as he's now in the middle of the team. Wind coming in the back. Red picks up perhaps. They're trying to kite this one out. Faye is going to be soon to follow as Pesmite going to repel over the wall. Gets it, but a vault breaker through the wall keeps him safe. Oh, Sean. And, oh, Sean going to come in. Can it? Faye actually picked this one up. Drops the Q. Does not drop a <laughs> plant with it, though. Uh, they're playing. <laughs> the waiting game. Who can do it? Vaultbreaker comes in and he's going to actually get the kill. Arden Blaze comes in. The relentless pursuit doesn't go through the wall though. The pass from Zyra. Can he pick up the kill? Is he going to suicide to the turret? It looks like he is going to fall to the minions and give the kill over to Sean. I would have given the kill over to um, not the Sean, he gives it over to God, God Quai. I would have given it over to Sean. Yeah, or even just try to make it out of there. There was no follow-up. If he had just run straight down, he would have given a nice high five to end God and made it out <laughs> alive, but fortunately not able to escape from that. Down mid, though, kill. they're pushing a tier two. The Dragon Descent comes in. Here comes Pasa in the back. Cannot connect the chain, just backs right on out with the second activation of the W. Pasa's, uh, not Pasa, Wind is chasing down on the 2 2 but the minefield comes in. He is oh. getting kited like a fiend. 2 2 gets out. Pasa is coming in the Mega. Inferno Death Bond goes in on the perhaps red flashes of the wall, but Pasa blowing up 2 to 8 and that whole exchange gets the passive pop stun comes in from perhaps slowing red down just a little bit. The blue buff is gonna possibly go over to Pasa here. And we're gonna see that one go over. There we go. They trade one for none and uh, they actually defend the tier two turret. 
Once again, Pasa showing you the trademarks of an incredibly skilled LeBlanc. You don't always use your ultimate for just double sigil of silence and a ton of damage. That time around, previously you used two Ethereal Change to kind of bait Red in, get a kill on him while he was chasing perhaps. That time, he used a Mimic Distortion to cover enough distance to take out 228 because he didn't need the damage, he needed the mobility, and that's exactly what Mimic allows you to choose. So another nice kill picked up there. Now 6, 1, and 2. He's got a Soul Stealer. The Magi's Soul Stealer in his always, inventory. It makes an appearance somewhere when you're ahead. Just not, he's not even ahead. He's, they're behind by 2,000 gold at this point, especially. And he's got six kills. If he can start stacking that up, that's going to be a very, uh, very destructive item for him. It goes either way. It can work out or it can fail. The big thing about it, especially at this mid-game point, is that it's not going to be any magic. Oh, he's resistance. going oh the shot! My God. The Mimic Distortion, the DFG, forcing him to go back. If that Ethereal Chain would have hit, that would have been a dead plant. And Pasta Flash for that, too. He's kind of... I, would, I think he was a little bit desperate for stacks there. Yeah. He wanted to stack, stack up hungry. the Magi's, <laughs> though. The stack's not quite fat enough right now. He's looking to push that wave, and really, who's going to stop him? It's going to be up to Red, who built very defensive, but has the odd Brutalizer in there as well. So we'll see if that Spirit Visage is enough. And without any magic penetration, Pasta, it's, it's going to be... A little, a little bit rough to yeah. chunk through such uh, overall. Whoa, Empire. Red actually activating the Dominus as Faye comes in a Mega Inferno Death Bomb out of four members, and it's going to be Faye falling to Pesmite, but uh, through the wall, Pasta picks up Red. We have Wind in the back line right now looking to pop the burnout. Can he run away? It looks like he dodges away from the root. Timbers falls. Wind is going to get poked out there by some mines and a Spiderling, but trading one for one with a top laner for the jungle. And now they will disengage from this one and be content with that fight, I guess, on the side of HKA. It was one for one, but Pasa, man, he's got the stacks the coming his way. Two stacks. Oh, now look at DFG there on a Pesmite. Jumps away. Can he get the assist oh, there? Tries to Keeps him safe. He's going to go back in onto Andy right now, but CGA <laughs> picks up the kill. I mean, Godquai picks up the kill. Wendy's going to be able to run out, but Pasa in the back line slipes off 2 2 A. And Ignite was actually used onto End God, so he gets out of there, and that's a two for one. Oh, what a flash <laughs> in from Godquai going unstoppable on End God. Pasa is a piece of scene. He's like, I'm out. Four stacks. Good enough, picked up two kills in that fight, but overall ties up the kill count at 16 to 16. You said 2,000 gold difference before, it's still staying even, even in turrets as well at three to three. And we've seen a lot of stomps, uh, especially Hong Kong Attitude in their semifinal games. Two to zero over KLH, no problems. Coming into this game versus CGA, it's tied up at one to one. Both teams definitely capable. Yes. We saw it in both <laughs> oh, yes. games one and two of turning this around and now, a very God. even game. I, I, exactly. That's, that's the point I was getting to, just <laughs> somewhat long-windedly. That's why I have to be so rapid, so I can cl you know, cram in a long explanation. <laughs> 16 it's kills apiece, three turrets apiece, one game apiece, game three. It's looking really even, and this is the closest any of the games have been so far in the amateur uh, tournament so far here at uh, Intel Extreme Masters. Um, Singapore. I'm glad you said all those numbers. Uh, <laughs> math is my degree, not my strong point, so we'll leave that over to EGAD. As Red clears out the bottom wave, Top wave cleared by Pasa, and right now he's just he's just a robot. He's, he's sniping. He's looking for kills. He wants to stack that Magi's. He's currently got what is it two? It looks like uh, he's got currently four. Sorry, so four stacks on that one. Looking with the 20, uh, 20 four AP extra from that, and we do see a repel actually coming in the mid lane. He misses misses the cocoon from Pesmite onto. Uh, he was trying to get to Corky, but he Valkyrie away. And uh, now, Sean with the Oracles, clearing out Ward, trying to kick, take control of this Baron Pit. These teams haven't been falling from the Baron Baits. They have not been looking to throw the game at Baron Pit. Exactly, and uh, possibly one of the indications that this is Singapore, not North America. We're going <laughs> to see Baron oh, get cleared out once again. Is Hong Kong attitude set up for what could be an incredible bait? Oh, Bottom geez. lane, it's a 1v1, no TPs. It's going to be a straight up 4v4. Now. EGA pushing down the middle lane. Pasa uh, wants these stacks up there. Sean! Pasa, he doesn't go through the wall with a distortion. Gets spotted up with the plants. He goes back in with a stun at the pass by. There's a song battery out of God Kawhi on the back lane, but nobody follows up. Fago gets taken out with a calling. And God Kawhi dominating. Here goes Wind in the back. Just going to try to make a breeze across. But gets hit by the root. The Satchel Charge knocking him back, forcing the Dragon's Descent. He's going to get slowed up a little bit by that. But the Mega Infernal Death Bond coming in. Oh my the Relentless God. Pursuit. And Lucian chasing this one down with the God Blake as he picks the kill with the piercing light, and here comes Red, the chain connects, but it's not enough. The shutdown goes on to Red. They chase down, perhaps they get the kill, they get the turret, and finally a huge advantage for them. They're 
four for one, looking to possibly get an inhibitor here as there's 40 seconds left on any of the big members from HKA. I wanted Pasta to jump over the wall and start that fight by just blowing Sean apart, but he couldn't quite make it into the team fight in time, and it was just Red doing what he does best, getting in there, an incredible super tank for the team. Pasta was able to get in there and pick up a kill, but he wound up dying and losing half of his stacks as well, so he is going to take a little bit of a hit. He's 9-2, and two, and when you have all the kills in your team, you're going to have to do something with it because you just saw there an incredible performance from God. Kawhi had the buffer zone in between uh, CGA and HKA that just allowed him to do so much damage. He culled, he got kills, he did about anything you can ask for an AD carry. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, that, that helps. That <laughs> just helps. a little bit. He doesn't even have tier 2 boots yet. Hey, look at Sean. He grabs a Negatron cloak coming out of the base. He's like, come on, man. Stacks are cool, but can we just be friends? And the answer is no. And that's the Negatron cloak. It's actually, there's one on God Kawhi as well. Turns it into a Banshee's Veil. All right, so a really good response to LeBlanc, to everything, actually, to Flash Tippers, to a stun from Annie. So we'll see if that comes into effect. And now, as Oracles for Sean picked up and refreshed, going to clear out what he can. He's, he can't extend past the river into that Baron pit as the Pink Wars galore for perhaps on the side of HK. So they still have a dominating control over this Baron pit for HK. Now, game number two, perhaps the support Morgana was just so clutch at comboing that CC in there with Faith. We haven't really seen that synergy in this game. I mean, there is seven deaths on on perhaps. So he's been trying to get in there, trying to make the same sort of initiation plays, but it just hasn't worked out so well as it did in the second game of the series. And for Sean, he's 0-3, but he has 10 assists. Not really getting in there, but it's the counter engage. Every single time HKA think that they have a pick, it's just strangle thorns, it's grasping roots, it's so much lockdown. HKA have yet to find an answer. Zyra is actually a really good answer to initiation from Annie from uh, LeBlanc as well. You just drop the strength like you said before, and you just run away and just root and kite as much as possible and leave as much space for Lucian open. I'm wondering if HKA have the plan of trying to close the distance on God Kwai and just sicking Pasa and uh, Faye on top of him and maybe win ghosting in with the Dragon's mm. Ascent. Could be possible, we'll see. But Baron getting cleared out of here, 2-2-A two, two, with that blue buff going to zone a little bit, drop the mines, drop the bouncing bombs. They can try to bait this out. There's going to be a ward clear in for Sean. And now they're going to try to blind HKA and suffocate them from the vision. But oh, perhaps it could be a, a bait, not a base race, but a, a decisive push down mid. Perhaps it's down to half health. And oh, now Pasa like getting chunked out there. 2-2-8 two, two, really getting off some pretty big hits that are stopping HKA from going in. Perhaps able to clear out enough ward coverage to, like you said, blind Cyber Games Arena. But I can say. Uh, oh, the flank could come in here, but. Oh my God. They're waiting. They're being very patient. They want to see if anybody's going to bite the bait and go for this Baron Pit. But they're going to look to scout out the blue and pick up possibly an easy tier two turn in the top lane as there's a huge wave that built up there. Look at the range of it. He's just beating into that as they are OP. And now the turret going to fall. And there it goes. God Kawhi picking up that turret. That's six to three in turrets right now. And they're rotating right on back to Baron, paying out to that objective. They want to try to secure this one very easily or bait it. HK are just one step behind. They tried to get in there onto the turret, but just got beat off a little bit by uh, CGA. Took it out first and are now on to the first Baron of the game. Last game, we saw 23 minute Baron for Hong Kong Attitude this time later. around. Down to half hit points oh. by trying to get in there. He's trying to come in, but he's exhausted. They turn and disengage perfectly. They gets taken out by the calling. A two-man stun with the tippers and the incinerate. The Mega Inferno Death Bomb connects. Pasta trying to run away with the clones. He jukes it again, but not this time. Actually, flashes him the wall with the chain. It's end god kiting as much as possible. Trying to take down Smite, and it looks like actually uh, it, LeBlanc did fall somehow to Renekton with the Ignite. And now Renekton is going to chase this one out, try to make it an ace for two. And with this one, could we see actually CGA end the game? There is 40 seconds left on the timer. 30 on Annie, 20 on Vi. They might actually be able to uh, secure another inhibitor and then maybe rotate back to that Baron as uh, it looked like Engada was trying to juke away from somebody in that top rush, but nobody chased him down. <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit scared, but that really delays his back. He being alive could have been enough wave clear to at least keep minions off the bottom turret, but with no one there to defend, the free inhibitor and in mind Baron did not go down. So you can say it's a win because HKA defended Baron, but they lost an inhibitor, which makes it even more difficult to keep that next Baron from going away to Cyber Games Arena. 12 and 1. God, quiet right now. Another BF sword. Still, no tier 2 boots. 
I think HK were hoping that God Quai would stop it being godlike and forego going legendary, but last uh, last team fight kind of said otherwise. It's now an yeah. incredible Lucian performance. It's Trinity Force Lucian once again worked out a little bit later on. Started with the Bloodthirster yep. and now has everything an AD carry could ask for. Even more damage coming off there in a BF sword. Yeah. Like, maybe Mercurials. You never know. That'd That's actually cool. true. Mercurials. I'd love to see that out there. He already has some MR, but he knows that the only possible way that he can die is getting blown up by Pasa. So the more MR that you stack up there, the more it's just going to keep him alive. He has the front line to deal with End God that's not going to be able to just 1v1 him. This team fight around Baron could decide this game. I'd oh, give it. Oh, perhaps. Gets hit by that. The Cullen comes out. The Repel as well. Cannot get in. The Relentless Pursuit comes through. Arden Blaze auto attacks. Oh. And a legendary God Kawhi needs to change, change his name to Legend. Dairy eye? Legend, legend Legendary Kawhi? Kawhi? Legendary So Kawhi? I don't know. Kawhi and Dairy? <laughs> Kawhi and Dairy. There you go. Uh, it's going to be back on to Baron for Cyber Games Arena. Down to half hit points. And this time with neither Kawhi or... Well, Kawhi's there. Fi is not there to steal it away. And it's going to be Baron buff at 36 and a half minutes. Going over to CGA. Now they will push in onto the mid lane. Inhibitor has respawned. But it's going to be a tough trip back to base for Hong Kong Attitude, who will not only have to keep their mid inhibitor alive, probably not going to happen, I don't think but so. 4v5 for the next 10 seconds. Can they keep CGA from closing out the deciding game? It's the grand finals of Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. It's come down to this three game best of three. CGA with an advantage. I think it's safe to say they have yes. an advantage. Only about 8,000, so not. I've only seen 8, bigger comers, yeah. come, comebacks, but I, I, I don't know. CGA. They've shown the potential that they have to just crush games to come back with, with huge, from huge deficits. But now, in the deciding game number three, can they close this game out against right. HKA? This could, be, this could be either the game-changing fight or the game-ending fight, as now Red just charging. He's got the GA. He's got Sunfire. He's a tanky monster. Pasa only really can try to look to assassinate Sean, but Negatron Cloak on him. He's got the Ruby Crystal as well. We're seeing the poke come in from the Ziggs, bouncing bombs everywhere. Lucian Siege potential coming into effect now. And any doesn't have flashes yet, but has the Tippers, has the stun. The bombs all over the place, just, just melting away the HP of Wind if he does tag him with that one. And no one else wants to get hit by those plants coming in from Zyra as well. The wave is finally there. Let's see how many attacks they can get in. The Missile Rage from Corky not really doing too much right now as the mines get dropped. The Culling gets popped. Wade is getting a ton of all damage. A ton of damage coming in. The Cocoon as well. Slicing and Dyson, but Red gonna get blown up through his oh GA. As now the Mega Infernal Death Bomb connects four. Red actually picked up the killing spree. Uh, on to uh, win right there with the Ignite. That's three inhibitors dead. Double super minions in those waves. And this is actually looking to be like game unless HKA can hold this off. But it doesn't look like they can as they're diving in. Red just a huge tanky monster. Strangled or forcing them to disengage from that one. Fade throwing himself in there, dying off onto Nexus. Lucian. The Have Nexus help. goes down. Shutdown actually going on to pass in the end. But there they are. There is a smiling face of God Kawhi. He is happy with that Lucian performance. And there are your victors, Cyber Games Arena Legends, the Grand Finals champions of the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. They fought all the way from a two, from a down one game comeback. Two wins in a row versus Dead Nation. Focus me in the semifinals. It made it all the way through a best of three that went the entire three games and are now your victors. Handshakes to come out. An incredible performance for both teams. You got to give a hand to Hong Kong Attitude, but no applause louder than Cyber Games Arena, your grand finalists, your champions of the amateur tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. That was one hell of a series. <laughs> That was awesome to see. These amateur teams, uh, quote unquote amateur teams, they have pro potential. They're in GPL. They do a lot of, uh, they have a lot of practice against the pro teams that are here and just showing it. Now, overall, they're two and one against uh, Hong Kong Attitude and uh, they're going to be pretty happy about that. Right. Coming into this game, it was actually split one to one in tournament meetings between HKA and Cyber Games Arena. Now a little bit of an advantage there, a one game advantage and uh, a lot of prize money coming their way. Yes, they did win the deciding game three. So congratulations to our champions. It is going to be Cyber Games Arena legend making it all the way through. They had about the most difficult road that you could possibly have in this amateur tournament. They fought six games over the course of yesterday and today. Yep. But hey, man, you got to do what you got to do and taking it home with the grand finals over Hong Kong Attitude. Yeah, and with that, that's going to be the end of this. It looks like we're going to wrap it up and uh, 
when we come back, we're going to be throwing it over to the pro tournament with J uh, Jason Kaplan and Joe Miller. All right. So there's a lot more League of Legends coming your way. Do you want to thank uh, Intel Extreme Masters for giving us this opportunity? We're going to be done for today, but stick around because Joe and Jason are coming back with the opening. Uh, I think it's quarterfinals matchups uh, from the pro tournament. We'll be seeing the finals for that a little bit later on in the week. So I got to say, there's a lot of League of Legends still yet to come. Do you want to thank you guys for watching it? If you do, uh, if you did enjoy our casting, you can uh, you can actually uh, spend some time not only following Intel Extreme Masters, but also you can follow us on Twitter at Rapid Casting at E G A D or Feed and check out all of the wonderful things that we have to offer. We're also doing an AMA over the course of this game. I think I've been a little bit lax at answering, so I'll go <laughs> check that out a little bit after the show. We're going to throw things over to, uh, I believe, the awards ceremony coming up in just a little Ooh. bit. But let's just be real. Those guys, both teams, either one equally capable of, uh, of winning these games out, took it all the way to a best of three. This is absolutely incredible. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have some more incredible League of Legends, but it's <laughs> going to be after a commercial break. So we're going to take one of those, throwing it over to the awards ceremony to award Cyber Games Arena with their grand finalist championship prize. Professional grade communication tool. The choice of professional teams. Perfect stream viewing experience. Chosen by online streamers. Easy to use voice messenger service. Chosen by over 12 million gamers. Communication is always vital when competing in tournaments. Winning a match requires perfect coordination. You cannot win by yourself. Raid call. Communication for winners. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. It is time for our award ceremony to graduate, of course, the winners of the tournament here, the amateur tournament of League of Legends, a fantastic final. And to assist me for that award ceremony, I'd like to welcome two gentlemen to the stage. It's Intel's George Wu and, of course, ESL's very own Carmack.
Welcome, gentlemen. Now, first off, the runners-up for the amateur tournament here for League of Legends at IEM Singapore. They played a fantastic tournament, a straight 2-0 yesterday versus the Kuala Lumpur Hunters, but now in this best of three, just falling short of first place. Still, fantastic tournament. Give it up for number two, Hong Kong Attitude. Give it up one more time for Hong Kong Attitude. Congratulations, guys. Of course, they played a fantastic tournament. We'll be seeing a lot of them still to come in the GPL. But now, the winners, they're also from Hong Kong. They took it to three games yesterday in their semi-final. They took it to three games again today, and they made it, in the end, the winners of the amateur tournament here at League of Legends at IEM Singapore, the Cyber Arena Games Legends. You can come on stage, guys. their fantastic check and the trophy. Give it up one more time for the Cyber Games Arena Legends! Fantastic stuff here at the Amateur Tournament at IEM Singapore. But there is, of course, a lot more League of Legends action to come. We're going to go over to a short break, but when we come back, we're going to continue with the quarterfinal of the Pro Tournament as we're going to see the Taipei Snipers take on the Singapore Sentinels. Don't go anywhere.